Hey everybody, Pastor Mark here coming to you from Central Wisconsin for St. Luke and St. John Lutheran Churches and this worship video is for November 29th, 2020. And yes, I know that my head is not in the picture, but that's because I wanted to show you that it is the first Sunday of Advent and so I'm wearing different colors and a different stole. Uh, that's what this thing is called, is a stole to signify the season, the new season. And so you've got the bell and the trumpet here, symbols of celebration. And that is what we are about. We want to celebrate the coming of the Lord Jesus into the world. And so this Advent season, we prepare for what God has in store for us. Thank you so much for joining me for this time. I pray it is a blessing to us all. The readings for this first Sunday in Advent, the first one, is from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins, we have been a long time. And shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we all are your people. The epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9, and I encourage you to read that on your own. The gospel lesson is from the gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter, beginning at verse 1. When they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before, and those who followed, were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, I begin this message showing you the floor. That's right, this is the carpeting in the sanctuary here at St. John. And I'm showing you this because there's nothing there. Well, you can see some imprints on the carpet, but what's supposed to be here, well, soon it will be here, isn't here yet. See, this is the place where in our sanctuary we put a Christmas tree. A really really big one in fact it's like 15 feet tall 
And the imprints that you're seeing on the floor are from the tree stand that has been standing there for many months now. We had our cross in it. And if you've watched these videos before, you might have seen that in one of them. But right now, there's nothing here because we don't have the tree yet. But it's coming. And that's why I wanted to show you this particular spot on the floor of the sanctuary. Because it's a reminder that Christmas is coming. Now, I am standing on the spot that I just showed you on the floor. Again, there is nothing here in this space. Well, not yet. It will be. There will be a tree up here and we will have decorations and it'll look quite a bit like Christmas. Right now, it looks pretty empty. This is the space in this church where we put our big Christmas tree. Over here, that's our altar area. And then on this side is a wall and there's a room behind me that you can see there. But this space, this will be filled with beauty. The beauty of God's creation and then lights and ornaments and all the rest of it that we associate with the celebration of, of Christmas. It'll be right here in this spot. But right now, nothing. It's not here yet. We don't have anything. We're just looking forward to it. And I wanted to do it this way today because that's really what we're all about now in Advent. We're in the season of Advent, the first season of the church here. And Advent is the season where we prepare for Jesus coming into the world. Where we look forward to his entering our creation, our fallen and sinful world, and accomplishing his plan of salvation. Advent is about preparing and anticipating Jesus being with us. And so naturally, over the next four weeks, we will build and look forward to and wind up to Christmas, that celebration when God became flesh and dwelt among us. Of course, for we who are on the other side now of Christmas, that is that Jesus has already come into the world and accomplished the plan of salvation, we don't just look forward to the celebration of his birth, of his first coming into the world, we are looking forward to his return. Advent is the idea of preparing for Jesus. And that's what we do. That's why I wanted to be in this spot for this video today. Because I'm guessing that some of us feel like we're in this spot. That is, that perhaps there's something missing. That maybe our lives feel a bit empty. And we're, we're kind of wondering, God, where are you? What are you doing? When are you going to do something? When are you going to enter into my life and show your love to me? Of course, we know, and I've said this many times if you've been watching these videos, we know that God is with us all the time. But sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we get distracted by all the things that are going on. And many times things get in the way of our keeping it in our hearts and minds that God is with us. The struggles and the challenges of this world, they can be obstacles for us enjoying God's presence in our lives. They can get in the way of our realizing that God is with us. And not only that, let's be honest, sometimes our own sin gets in the way of our enjoying God's presence. We go against his will, we, we rebel against the things that he has called us to do. We avoid his call sometimes to do what we know is right. And sometimes we just outright ignore him and do what we want rather than what he commands us to do. We sin. And that's a problem. That's a big problem for us. And it still impacts us today as we are wondering, where is God? And yet here we're running the other way or we're putting up a, a boundary saying, no, don't bother me. In fact, many times I, I find myself sort of sticking God in one part of my life saying, okay, God, you take care of these things and you be ready when I call on you, please, but I'll handle the rest of it. I can do this. Don't worry. Yeah, that, that's a lie. I can't handle it. And I'm not really good at running my own life. I need God desperately. And thankfully, he is there for me. Because even though I sin against him, he is still my loving father. 
and I am forgiven because of Jesus' death on the cross. I want to share with you again the words from today's Old Testament lesson from Isaiah. It says, We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. You have hidden your face from us, and you have made us melt. You have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. Notice that the prophet there says, we have sinned. That's what that word iniquities means. It means our wrongdoings, our sins. And we're in trouble because of them. We've done things against God's will. We have rejected his commands for us. We, we haven't enjoyed and shared his gifts of love that he's given us. So yeah, we have sinned. But still, again, as Isaiah says here, now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. He still loves us. And yes, he is still active in our lives each day. In fact... He can even work in the midst of our sin. He can even carry out his will when we are actively working against him. He can still show his love to us in so many different ways. Even when we don't feel like he's there. Even when we're standing around in what seems like total emptiness, wondering, God, where are you? He is there with his love. Even though sometimes that emptiness is caused by our own rebellious, sinful nature, still God loves us and is with us. And we want to be open to his work in our lives. We want to welcome him each day as he shares his gifts with us, as he continues to work out his gifts of salvation in our lives so that we can grow as his children, that we can grow in our relationship with him, and grow in our relationship with others to share his love with them. The Advent is about anticipating and looking forward to Jesus coming into the world. We can have Advent every single day in the sense that when we get up in the morning, when we go about our activities, we can regularly be saying, Lord, please work in me. Welcome, Lord, to my heart and please have your way with me. Because we know that when God carries out his will in our lives, it is always going to work out for our good. It'll still be difficult. Life is still hard. We still do live on, on this fallen creation, this, this difficult, sinful, evil, just bad place. Yeah, that's still where we're at. But God is still there with us too. He still loves us and cares for us. He forgives us. He keeps us in his hand and has promised that he will be with us always. And so as we sometimes deal with the emptiness that comes with this life, this sinful life, we know we're not really empty, that God is with us, surrounding us with his love. And so we look forward to what our Heavenly Father has in store for us. We look forward to what Jesus is going to do in our lives today, every day. And we look forward to, yes, when he will return in glory and we will celebrate with him forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We join our hearts in prayer. O oh, almighty and loving God, in the name of Jesus, the light of the world, hear my prayer. I pray for those who are dealing with sickness, who are facing tests and procedures, who are undergoing treatments, and who are recovering from surgeries. May the great physician grant them healing. For those who are grieving, may the Lord of life grant them comfort and hope. And may they trust in his promises that because Jesus lives, we shall live also. I pray for those who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries this week, for Patty Gilhausen, Tricia Grimm, Dennis Cousy, James Kruger and Jenny Resch, Travis Engelberth, Hunter Butke, 
Todd Wilford, and Brad and Bonnie Guzzi. I ask God's abundant blessings. I pray for peace and healing to come to my nation, my community, and my relationships. Wherever there is strife, may the Prince of Peace move powerfully to bring peace. I pray for those in my life who do not know Jesus as their Savior, that I would be used as an instrument of God's love to them so that they would know forgiveness and life in the crucified and risen Lord. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, the light of the world, hear my prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to spend with me and watching this video. I hope that you are reminded each and every day of God's love for you and that you're aware of his presence in your life, that he is actively working in you and through you and on you and with you to accomplish his purposes. And as we prepare to celebrate the coming of our Lord Jesus at Christmas, may we prepare our hearts each and every day for his work and what he has in store for us, knowing that all things work for good for those who love Christ. Thank you for watching, and may God bless and keep you always.